This is Grape Video 33, Mechanical Pruning of Grapevines. Oh yes, this is a very different kind of pruning than all the previous pruning videos we've been talking about. Why would we want to send a machine like this down the road? Why do we mechanically prune grapevines? To reduce cost. Not because we can do a better job than by hand, but we can do it faster and at less cost. And that's important. In Michigan, for example, 25 years ago, virtually none of the juice grape vineyards in Michigan, about 13,000 acres, were mechanically pruned. Now, the majority of them are mechanically pruned. Why? Because the price paid for grapes in recent years has averaged about $250 a ton, and it's just too expensive to do this major vineyard task entirely by hand. So, we prune to reduce cost, but why do we mechanically prune grapevines? Another reason is to reduce dependence on manual labor. Yes, as life goes on, it's getting more and more difficult to get agricultural labor to fulfill the tasks in the vineyard like pruning. So we are relying more and more on machines. Oh, and there are machines, and machines, and machines. We're going to look at many different kinds of machines, but we're not going to be suggesting one is necessarily better than the other because each grower tends to evolve his own strategy for mechanical pruning. It's amazing, but they do. Not only do they have different kinds of machines, but with the very same machine, Growers will tend to use things differently. So the best that we can convey to you are principles when doing mechanical pruning. But don't expect that we're going to put a formula down that says you do it exactly this way with this machine on these vines because it just doesn't seem to go that way. Well, there isn't a precise formula for pruning, mechanical pruning of grapevines, but there is a strategy that can be followed for mechanical pruning of grapevines, and it goes like this. Step one, manual pre-prune for trunk renewal, cordon renewal, etc. From the previous videos, it should be obvious by now that certain parts of the pruning task cannot be done by machine. They can only be done manually with pruning shears, etc. Yes, there has been research to create robotic pruning that would duplicate the effort that can be done currently by hand. But I'm not aware that that has succeeded at this point, maybe in the future. For now, all of our mechanical pruning that I'm familiar with does require some manual pre-pruning before we go into the vineyard with the machine. And then we do that. Then we go into the vineyard with a mechanical pruning device, as we're going to see, and most often we have to follow that effort up with a manual prune follow-up to totally finish the job. So yes, mechanical pruning is very helpful, but there are manual steps in the pruning process before and after the use of these mechanical devices. Let's look at this device. This is a Plank pruner, French made, beautiful machine. Let's try to illustrate those steps in the mechanical pruning process. Here the machine is just entering a row. This is a row of vines that is trained Scott Henry. The upper fruiting zone, as you can see, has lots of canes coming upward that have been shoot positioned. The lower fruiting zone is a bit more sparse, but there is one below the wire 
on which we are focused with the pruner. Here's a, another shot of that same process. And you can see the machine is going down and this machine can flow through wires, around posts, around trunks. It's a wonderful gadget. And the target is to take those canes above the upper fruiting wire and prune them off and get rid of them because it cuts these canes into about three inch length pieces that some of them at least fall to the ground. And we take that area and with the machine we can create this pruned area on the upper fruiting zone with this mechanical device. Well before we went through there with the machine we had to take care of the canes that form the lower fruiting wire as outlined in red here. If we hadn't done that before the machine went through we might have pruned some of them off and they wouldn't be available. So there is a pre-pruning step manually in this particular approach to mechanical pruning. Let's watch this machine in action. It's going above the upper fruiting zone. If you look carefully, you can see that lower fruiting zone with canes already tied to a lower wire. And occasionally, right there is one, some of the upper cordons have been replaced already with canes. See some of those there? If we hadn't done that before the pruning process, we'd have pruned them off with this machine and we couldn't have done renewal of that upper cordon where it was needed. Okay, after that machine went through, it left stuff like this. That's in the background. That's on the next row behind us and like this over here. It left a lot of stubs of four or five node short canes or spurs and the manual follow-up took that mess and reduced it to this so that we have a very nice upper fruiting zone with two to three node spurs all along that cordon and overall the mechanical pruning, pruning process was a big help it reduced the amount of hand labor we needed to get that job done. Here's another situation. This is a palenque pruner and it has a positioning device behind that pruner that was fabricated by the Vine Tech company in Prosser, Washington. And we're going down this top wire cordon trained row of concords to do the mechanical pruning process. But as we do that, we see that it does an imprecise job. Here, for example, that I've just outlined in red are canes that are below what we want for the fruiting zone. The machine just missed them. It did an imperfect job. Looking at it before the pruning took place, here's the target for a lot of pruning to take place, but that doesn't do a perfect job. Yes, this area behind the machine that's already been done looks a lot better than the area in the foreground, but as we look closely, there are canes that were not caught by the mechanical pruner and are going to be needed to be pruned off manually as a manual follow-up. And here we are. It's one month later. It took us a while to get there, but we're going to do the manual follow-up to take all of the growth that was missed by that pruner and cut that out by hand 
so that this area will then look like the row that was already done and it looks fairly decent after the manual follow-up pruning. Mechanical pruning devices. There are numerous mechanical devices for pruning grapevines and we're just going to show you a few that we're familiar with but there are many 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 others. None of the devices with which I am familiar are capable of performing a complete sustainable pruning job on grapevines and that sustainable word is very important and we're going to come back to that. Nevertheless mechanical pruning devices can greatly reduce a grower's cost of pruning and dependence on manual labor. Let's look at some of these gadgets. First one I put on here is from the farm of Roger and Nancy Scott way back in 1983 out on Bluff Point in the Finger Lakes region and they were pruning with this gadget as I recall in the neighborhood of 60 to 70 acres they were pruning largely umbrella trained native varieties like Concord, perhaps Catawba, maybe Niagara. I don't remember their varietal mix anymore. It's been a year or two. But they would do this in a way that they could prune this off with this machine and come back and do a follow-up and do a great job. But we're going to come back to Roger and Nancy later in this presentation. But that's one device, the machine has a fairly fixed two sickle bars, one down one side, one over the top. Some adjustment can be made to angle that, but a basic, very heavy duty, wonderful sickle bar mechanical pruning device. This is out of focus, I'm sorry to say, but this is even uh, simpler. This is where the red line is. That's just a straight bar sickle. And there's a cylinder that I won't highlight that can make an adjustment on this sickle bar from vertical and bend it in and out because you can see here this, this uh, trellis is uh, a bit wobbly. And, uh, but this is a basic sickle bar side hedge mechanical pruning device. Well, this is a little bit more sophisticated. This was developed, I believe, by Cornell University. Uh, and it is a triangulated hedger with sickle bars. And the lower one that I have highlighted, a little thicker in red, can articulate in and out of the vine to go around trunks, go around posts. But that's a, a basic triangulated hedger with three sickle bars. Here's another sickle bar arrangement. This is a unit that was developed by Michigan State University and then commercialized by the Jellison Company in Benzonia, Michigan. And besides being a side hedger, it actually can do more work under the vine than one might first think. Why? Because at the base of that sickle bar is a hydraulic motor that rotates these very stiff hoses and they serve the purpose of pushing canes that are under the trellis around and have them go across the cutter bar so you actually get both a side cut action and an undercut action all with one straight sickle bar and as you can see this device has a lot of maneuverability in terms of its angling and height so you can go into different vineyards and do a fairly good job this is actually the most prevalent pruner in Michigan Well, this is not a mechanical pruning device, but this is a unit that was developed at Michigan State University and was commercialized. And we call that a cane positioner. It can take 
running brush along the top of the trellis and these very stiff tines rotate around. Let's take a look at another picture. There's another look at it and there I've outlined the tines and there's a set of tines on each side and the whole purpose of this is to get that running brush that's on the top of the trellis down to the side where we will have a better target for the mechanical pruning process. So mechanical pruning can involve not only the actual cutting but the reorientation of canes so they become a better target for the pruning process. And that's what this gadget is like. This was produced by the Friday Manufacturing Company originally in Michigan and now produced elsewhere. And this is such a poor picture, sorry for that, that I'll kind of show you what goes on with, with some additional help. That is the two long cutter bars that run parallel to each other and then on either side of the trellis and then there's a couple of I don't know rotating spider wheels one on each side with stiff fiberglass rods that come down and they work to pull the brush off of the top of the trellis and down so that this brush will pass in front of those two long cutter bars and this does both sides of the trellis at the same time those cutter bars can be moved in and out depending upon the width needed to make a cut and it has served the Michigan industry well. Here's a gadget. I'm sorry I don't have a better picture of this. Mr. Tom Oldridge from Arkansas was the originator of this machine and unfortunately I can't show you all the cutter bars and devices for reorienting brush. It's quite a sophisticated machine. I could only see one cutter bar right there, but this machine has many to do a, a very elaborate job of mechanically pruning these grapevines. This was one of the field days we held many years ago to show off these gadgets. All right, now, now we're going into a more sophisticated, in my estimation, type of machine. I started showing you this machine right at the beginning of the video. And the basic machine is a Palenque French-built machine with what are called marguerite heads, those round heads. And that's where the cutting takes place for the most part. And the beauty of those is, is that it pushes wires above and below the cutting areas so they won't be cut off. And those yellow wheels facilitate making all of this flow around grapevine trunks and trellis posts. So it can get a lot more intimate with the vine than cutter bars can. I think this is, this is amazing technology. And then this gadget was added on the back by the Vine Tech Company out of Prosser. And this is out in Washington. And it facilitates moving brush up to a cutter bar that's on the back. To whatever is missed by the Palenque machine on the top of the trellis is positioned into place. And there's a rotating series of cutters on the back to make the process complete. And here is the Cadillac, if you will, Mercedes perhaps, um, of mechanical pruners. This is the Palenque machine that is devised just for mechanical pruning and other procedures in the vineyard. Beautiful machine. And it is quite a ride when you're in this because you're really up high but not many growers 
in my neighborhood can afford such a machine. But this is what it looks like in Mr. Rick Brown's shop. Uh, you're sitting quite high, and you can see perhaps the pruner head is down sitting on the floor, but you're up quite a ways, I don't know, at least 10 feet off the ground when you ride down the road with this big machine. But it, uh, it's an amazing piece of, of engineering. Well, we're trying to make it a little simpler than that big machine, and we're taking the plank head, and we're putting it on a trailer. This is some of our current work, and this is the start of fabricating a plank pruner that would be pulled on a trailer behind a tractor. And here's the gadget out in the field on its maiden voyage. A little late in the season already. It's May and we're just getting this gadget ready for a field trial. But the idea is to take these marguerite pruning heads, mount them on a simple trailer. On the trailer are a couple of cameras that the operator in the tractor can follow the progress of this unit without having his head turned all the time. And as we progress with this project, we hope to make this more and more efficient at the pruning process and to have a unit that will be fairly easy to use, fairly easy to detach from the tractor when it's not being used uh, in the field. Now there is a principle that is called KISS, which stands for Keep It Simple Blank. I wanted to put in the video here some approaches to mechanical pruning that follow the KISS principle. So we're now going to look at some innovations that growers have used to do mechanical pruning without a lot of investment in mechanical devices. Here is Mr. Paul Lewis, whose farm is in the Finger Lakes, and I took this picture a very, very long time ago, back in 1976. And let's explain what's going on here. Paul is standing on a platform that's on the th a three-point hitch behind the tractor, right there. And he's doing this work, I know, late afternoon, because his son comes home from high school and his job after school is to be the tractor driver while dad does this mechanical pruning. And how is he doing this? Well, first of all, welded onto that frame is what I would call a hangman. Remember when you used to play the game hangman? Well, this is a very, very stout metal bar, metal tubing, and on that hangs down a spring. And I believe this spring was apart from a post pounder. And the spring is attached to a great big McCulloch heavy, heavy chainsaw that you could barely lift. But it's not anything that Paul has to carry the weight of. He just has to guide it. And right there is the blade. So he goes and he puts the blade down through when he comes to a post. Hopefully he's awake and he pulls it out around the post and back in. And father and son go down the end of the afternoon and buzz off some of this wood. This was on Rougean, a red French hybrid, Cybel 5898. And that's how mechanical pruning got done on the Lewis farm. Oh, I forgot to mention that there is an, an additional piece of tubing that I just outlined in blue. That is so that the brush doesn't whack Paul in the face as he's going down through. And you can see he's wearing protective eyewear just in case, just in case. And there is Paul showing how after the get done doing 
the pruning and you can see some vines in the background that have just been cut with the chainsaw. Well, during the day, Paul goes out with shears and small loppers and he cleans up those cordons to take off what the chainsaw missed. And that's the finished job. Looks pretty good, I think. And then the sun comes home and they repeat the process the next day. Well, this is perhaps even simpler. This is called a little wonder. It's a 110 volt, very sturdy hedger for uh, pruning your bushes at home or anything like that. But this is a lot more stout than the kinds you might find in your local uh, stores. And it is capable of making cuts of brush that's uh, sometimes up to an inch in diameter. It's pretty, pretty amazing. So how has this been used? Well, isn't this creative? Here's Mr. Irv Davis back in 1992 in Hector, New York. Irv was gracious enough to uh, climb into this box. It's actually sitting in his barn. It's the middle of summer here. But he was demonstrating how that little wonder with a generator out the back is used uh, to prune over 60 acres of vineyard in the winter time. How is this done? Well, that whole little shed uh, is mounted on a three-point hitch right there. And actually there was a propane heater inside of there to keep his hired man warm while Irv drove the tractor. And he would just go down the row and his hired man would hang out that door and hedge the vines hour after hour. There may have been other parts to this plan that I'm not aware of. I see it looks like a protective tubing uh, on the corner of, of that uh, shed, but that was the basics of it, that a 110 volt heavy duty hedger was used to prune about 60 acres of vineyard as I recall. Now that's creative mechanical pruning. There's the hedger blade right there. Okay. Well, I put this in uh, last. I'm sorry the picture is so poor, but Don Peak in Pulteney, New York would be in a trailer that someone would be pulling him along and he would be using a pneumatic pruning shear to make lots of cuts as that trailer went very slowly down the row. So the mechanization was uh, at the low end of, of uh, what this video is about. Nevertheless, this was more efficient than trying to do it simply by hand. And he got a lot done and then would go back and do a follow-up, but make major pruning cuts with this pneumatic shears with some efficiency. So I put it in under vineyard mechanization, mechanical pruning. Well, here is a schematic of the concept of minimal pruning. And what does that mean? Minimal pruning means that we don't do any pruning on the vine except that required to keep the growth of the vine manageable so that all the fruit that's produced can get into the collector plates of the harvester. This concept originated, I believe, in Australia and was used on thousands of acres there I don't know if it's still used or not, truthfully, but we used it for a while in New York, where I was years ago. And the concept was this, the vine will be self-regulating. All we need to do is remove the brush that hangs down below where it can be managed. And we'll let the vine self-regulate itself to produce the amount of crop that it can carry. So we had this 
conglomeration of all ages of wood up on the trellis. And that's what my very crude schematic years ago looked like. Unfortunately, as this concept was put into practice, as the years went on, it didn't look so good. These are Concord grapes, but if you look here and there, there's a lot of reddish looking Concord grapes, which indicates they haven't ripened that well. They probably are unmarketable. And the concept of minimal pruning did not work out in the end. And I put all of this in here for one reason, because if you do mechanical pruning, you need to do it in a way that it is sustainable for year after year after year after year. I'm going to talk just a little bit more about that. But in desperation, some people have bought mechanical pruning devices because of the economics going on on their farm. And they've gone out and used them to partially do the job. And when that happens, it gets more and more difficult to keep up with the vines. And eventually, the vines stop performing adequately. So when you do mechanical pruning, think of the word sustainable. Can I do what I did this year, next year, the year after, and the year after, and get fruit that is of acceptable quality for the market? Well, I put this picture in because we have one row that has been hand pruned. We have another row that has been mechanically pruned. You might be able to guess which is which, but they look fairly comparable. Yes, the one on the left is the one that's been mechanically pruned. And it brings up a couple of important points. Because when we mechanically prune vines, the fruitfulness of the individual nodes tends to be on average less because we are not selecting each node in the precise way that we do when we prune by hand, we generally have to increase the node count on vines by 50% or so. So the abundance of growth on the mechanically prune row is not by accident. It's on purpose to make that compensation for the average node fruitfulness of the vines. The second point of, in this picture is that see how all of the growth is back to the cordon area? That's good. Why? Because it means that this approach to mechanical pruning with the hand follow-up can be sustained year after year after year. Too many times when we mechanically pruned years ago, we would get further and further away from the basic cordon. And that led to many problems. So if you're going to do mechanical pruning, think sustainable, repeatable, year after year. If you don't, it may come back to be a problem for you. Well, here is Roger and Nancy Scott, Bluff Point, New York, in 1983. What a lovely couple. And I put this on because the topic of mechanical pruning, as I started this video, I started to say that each grower tends to devise their own scheme, their own strategy to make it work for them. What a creative couple Roger and Nancy were. Roger would use this device mornings. I recall that he would tell me that he could only keep focused to do this for a half a day. It was too tiring to follow the trellis wires with this gadget for a full day. So he would do this part of the mechanical pruning with the machine. I think, truthfully, Nancy did most of the hand follow-up, but I believe Roger helped in that too. They had more or less 60 acres, as I recall. They got so that they could do all of their work and shortly after the new year they could go to Florida for the latter part of the winter 
and enjoy life because they had done all of their pruning, just the two of them, on 60 or more acres. How did they do this? They got in rotation. They found out over time that they could do something like mechanically prune a vineyard for two years with hand follow-up, and then maybe in the third year come back and prune it out completely by hand, and then fix up the trellis while they were doing that manual pruning, and then go back into a cycle. And they had different cycles for different vineyards because they had many different varieties. But in general, they only had to prune manually a fourth to a third of their vineyard each year because the rest they were doing with this machine and they had a system and it was sustainable. And I haven't seen them or talked to them in decades, but they had already been doing this for 20 some years as I recall when I took these pictures and it's a, really a success story of a farm couple putting together a sustainable mechanical pruning scheme. So if you get into this, think of making a sustainable program that will work for you. Thank you for your attention. And as always, happy grape growing.